What's up, MTG Burgeoning community? What's up, YouTube viewing audience? If you are part of the latter and wish to join the former, click that subscribe button now. And in so doing, you become eligible for all of this channel's sweet, sweet rewards. In today's video, we continue our kitchen table series with deck tech number 22, Saltai Mimeoplasm. <laughs> What's up, Burgeoning fans? You heard it right at the beginning. This is deck tech number 22 of the Kitchen Table series, our longest running series of the channel, and we're already up to deck number 22. Unbelievable, where is the time going? And in today's video, we are taking a look at a Saltai Mimeoplasm deck. As is customary with our Kitchen Table deck series, let's start with our land base. And we got one, two, we got four basic swaps to start things off. And shortly thereafter, I'm going to show you five islands. So four swaps, five islands, that's nine basic lands. We are going to include a play set of Woodland Cemetery. It's our Golgari check land, comes into play tapped unless we control a swap or forest. And of course, we've got four swaps right here so far. And to include the, I'm not to include, to increase the probability of those woodland cemeteries coming into play untapped, we have a play set of Overgrown Tomb. It's our Golgari Shockland, comes into play tapped, but we can pay two life. If we do, it enters not tapped, which will also be untapped. Four copies of Overgrown Tomb to go with our four copies of Woodland Cemetery. And a few other lands just to help smooth out the mana base. We got one copy of Watery Grave, which is our Demir Shockland. We have one copy of Breeding Pool, which is our Simic Shockland. And one copy of Morphic Pool, which is going to be our Demir Fanland from Battle Bond. So those are, that's the land base for this deck. Okay, we, we got a three color deck here that we need access to. Uh, a lot of the different, a lot of the different spells are more than one color. So we want to make sure we can access the mana as best we possibly can. And of course, since this is a kitchen table deck, you got to have a soul ring included to go with those lands. And there it is. We'll throw our soul ring on top. Well, I just put it right there. All right. So this is a salt time mimeoplasm. So let's meet the creature by name. And we have here the Mimeoplasm. He's two. He's a Saltai, which is a black, a green, and a blue. He's a legendary ooze. And as the Mimeoplasm enters the battlefield, we may exile two creature cards from graveyards. If we do, it enters the battlefield as a copy of one of those creatures with an additional number of plus one, plus one counters on it equal to the power of the other card. Four copies of the Mimeoplasm. He goes front and center, not to be shadowed by our soul ring, of course. All right, so let's meet some of the creatures that we want to target with the Mimeoplasm. Now, we can't always suspect that our opponents are going to have some nice choice prime looking creatures in their graveyard. So we have some of our own packed for the amusement of seeing them exiled by our big daddy ooze over there. So the first play set of cards that we're going to show is the end raised forerunners. Five and triple green. It's a seven, seven vigilance trample haste. And when it enters the battlefield, other creatures we control get plus two, plus two and gain vigilance and trample until end of turn. Four copies for end raise forerunners. Now, when we cast the Mimeoplasm, if we are looking to exile creatures from our own graveyard, we definitely want the Mimeoplasm to have this body because we want the vigilance, we want the trample, but most importantly, we want the haste. Four copies of the end raise forerunners. We're going to put them right there on the left. All right, next. Another set of creature cards that we want the Mimeoplasm to become the body of. And that's going to be, going back to Mirage for this one, folks, Spirit of the Night. Six and triple black. It's a 6-5 legendary. I'm not even sure what the creature type is. Um, I don't remember. I know it got eroded. Spirit. I think it's a spirit. 
and it's a 6-5. It's Flying Trample Protection from Black, and it has First Strike when attacking, and it's unaffected by Summoning Sickness, which, of course, would later be keyworded as Haste. Four copies of the Spirit of the Night, and we want that to be the Mimeoplasm Body. So, if we have our bodies picked out, what are the creature cards that want to be the plus one, plus one counters? Well, let's take a look at them, folks. We got Death Shadow. It's a 13-13 when it's in the graveyard. It's only minus X, minus X for our life total if it's out there on the battlefield. So, if it's exiled with the Mimeoplasm, and if it becomes card, if it becomes creature number two, it's going to put 13 plus one, plus one counters right onto the body. Two copies of Death Shadow. And they're going to go right there, because those are the ones that we want exiled as the plus one, plus one counters. Speaking of 1313, let's take a look at the Croson Cloud Scraper. Seven and triple green for a 1313 Beast Mutant. At the beginning of our upkeep, we have to sacrifice Croson Cloud Scraper unless we pay two green. Not really going to be a problem in this deck. And it also has the morph mechanic, which is seven and double green, to unmorph it, and then we can cast it for its morph cost of three. Again, I don't see us really doing that. We want it in the graveyard. We want to be able to exile it with the Mimeoplasma and put 13 plus one plus one counters on them. Three copies of Croson Cloud Scraper. All right, so next up we have the Impervious Great Worm. Seven and triple green. We have a 1616 Indestructible Worm. It has the Convoke mechanic, but that's not really going to help us a great deal in this deck. We're just looking to get the Impervious Great Worm into the graveyard, exile it with the Mimeoplasm, and put 16 plus one plus one counters on the body of an Enraged Forerunners or a Spirit of the Night, swing in, same turn, and destroy our opponent. Three copies, Impervious Great Worm. So we have eight copies of the body and eight copies of the plus one plus one counters that we want the Mimeoplasm to be to have on him or on it, I guess we should say. All right, so now let's look at some of the cards that are going to help bring it all together. And we're starting off with a play set of Careful Study. Blue Sorcery, draw two cards, then discard two cards from our hand. Very simply, we draw two cards, we discard any two of these combination of cards over here, get them into the graveyard, and prepare to cast our Mimeoplasm. Four copies, careful study. All right, now let's move over to some removal spells here. We're going to talk about Tyrant Scorn. Tyrant Scorn from War of the Spark is a blue and a black. It's an instant. We get to pick one. We destroy target creature with a CMC of three or less, or we return target creature to its owner's hand. Now, that second ability is pretty valuable for us, particularly if somebody goes to either take control of our Mimeoplasm or destroy it. We can cast Tyrant Scorn, bring Mimeoplasm back to our hand, and then cast it again during our next turn. Again, exile a couple of other creatures. Two copies, Tyrant Scorn. We'll put that on the removal side over here. Next up, we have a couple copies of Force of Vigor. Two and two green. If it's not our turn, we may exile a green card from our hand rather than pay the spell's mana cost. And we can destroy up to two target artifacts and or enchantments. Two copies, Force of Vigor. All right, next up we have in the with the idea of, uh, what do you want to say this, removal, disruption, we're going to play with a play set of Force of Negation. One and two blue, it's an instant from Modern Horizons. If it's not our turn, we may exile a blue card from our hand rather than pay the spell's mana cost. And we can counter target non-creature spell. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. This is in this deck to protect from sorcery speed removal the Mimeoplasm. Okay, so we got four copies of Force of Negation. Hopefully we don't need to use that, but if we have to, it's good to be able to protect our big guy. All right, so going back to the card draw portion of this deck, we're going to have a couple copies of Fact or Fiction. Three in a blue. 
instant, reveal the top five cards of our library, and opponent separates those cards into two piles. We put one into our hand and the other into our graveyard. So a little similar to careful study where we can pick the cards that go to our graveyard, we can do the same thing with fact or fiction. Two copies, fact or fiction. And lastly, back to the removal side of things, we got two copies of Ashiok Dream Render. For one and any two and any combination of two Demir colors, this is a planeswalker that comes into play with five loyalty counters, and it has a static ability of spells and abilities our opponents control can't cause their controller to search their library. We can also minus one and have target player put the top four cards of their library into their graveyard, then exile each opponent's graveyard. Now, it may seem counterintuitive to include a, a spell that exiles our opponent's graveyards if we are, you know, if we are banking on a mimeoplasm. <laughs> let's try that again. Okay, let's try that again. It seems counterintuitive to include a, a Planeswalker spell like Ashiok that eliminates our opponent's graveyards if our path to victory is the Mimeoplasm. And as we talked about earlier, we can't always count on our opponents having good creatures in their graveyards. That's why we came jam-packed with our own. And having Ashiok's ability to remove, um, to exile graveyards, to exile our opponent's graveyards helps shape the potential use of the following card, which we're going to put this right down here. The last play set of cards, the last four cards of this deck, having Ashiok here to exile our opponent's graveyard makes it easier for us to cast a living death. Three in double black, each player exiles all creature cards from his or her graveyard, then sacrifices all creatures he or she controls, then puts all cards he or she exiled this way onto the battlefield. So we don't have to worry about our opponents bringing any creatures from their graveyard into play if we are able to utilize Ashiok's minus one ability and exile our opponent's graveyards. Therefore, we can just cast our living death if we're having trouble getting or keeping a Mimeoplasm in play, put any number of these creatures into play, and then just, you know, hold on to a Force of Negation, counter any Sorcery Speed board wipes, move to our turn, and win the game. Living death. Three and double black. Four copies, one playset, Living Death. And folks, that is Kitchen Table Series Deck Tech number 22. Deck Tech number 22. Wow. All right. This is MTG Burgeoning. Let's take this baby for a spin. All right, Virginite fans, so let's shuffle this baby up. Whoops, let's give it a quick play test just to see how it flows. We're not gonna get too extensive here, just to kind of have a little bit of feel of the deck, see how quickly we can get those cards into the graveyard for the Mimeoplasm. I think I failed to mention that Ashiok is also valuable in targeting ourselves for putting four cards into the graveyard. Five. Six, seven, and there she is right there. Woodland Cemetery, Living Death. Oh, this is gonna be great, Impervious Great Worm. Come on, give us a careful study. Factor Fiction is nice. And last card is Careful Study. Oh, we don't have the blue, oh no. All right, we keep, we keep. All right, we move to turn one, watch this. Blue Mana Source, turn one, bam, oh. All right, that's not terrible. We'll play our Swamp, turn two. Draw a card. There's our island. We'll tap one. We're going to cast our careful study. We're going to study real carefully. Draw one. Draw two. Love to see that we drew an island there. And we're going to discard an impervious great worm and an endless end raise forerunners. All right. We pass the turn. We're on turn number three. Things are looking pretty good so far. We draw another impervious great worm. We'll play a Woodland Cemetery. We'll cast Ashiok, Dream Render. It looks like at the point at this point in time, we're playing the Living Death Angle. So we'll activate Ashiok, put the top four. There goes a Force of Negation, a Crows and Cloud Scraper, a Careful Study, and our Soul Ring into the Graveyard. We move to turn four. We draw a card. We have a Death Shadow, which is great because we can play... Actually, you know what? Let's not even play the... That's because what we're going to do is we're going to end of turn a fact of fiction to get a land to guarantee 
that we can cast our living death. We tap three. We go careful study into the graveyard, Ashiok into the graveyard, Force of Vigor, and a Crows and Cloudscaper. We turn f end of turn. We cast Fact of Fiction, showing a living death, showing a Mimeoplasm, showing that, and the land. We take the pile that has the land, we cast our living death, and that's how it goes, folks. MTG burgeoning, we are out.